And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Sunday, March 20th, 2022. Uh, the markets are pretty much opening up basically almost unchanged to up a little bit to down a little bit as we wait for the next direction setting traders to uh, come in and let us know where we're going to go. <clears throat> now, what took place on Friday, though, was again uh, very, very uh, astounding to me at the force at which they had determined that they were moving this market higher. And they actually did it on uh, fairly low volume. So it became more apparent in, in, to me that basically what was really taking place for the whole week, because it, remember this really began uh, on Tuesday's Globex session coming into our own Tuesday opening. And they started buying from that low at 12,941. And they reached a high on Friday at the close at 14,435. This is a massive four day rally, massive four day rally with a couple of declines here and there. Uh, but when I try to compare it to what the market is doing, I have to return and go to the technical side, uh, basically because fundamentally it makes absolutely no sense at all. And what's going on geopolitically makes absolutely no sense at all to what they're deciding that they're gonna do. And so I had to really put it to that there was, when you really look at the Friday's expiration was a monthly expiration. And from what I read from an article that was on, um, Zero hedge that they were reporting that there was something like three point two trillion dollars worth of positions that were going to come to fruition that needed to be taken off, needed to be rolled, needed to be moved, um, with two point some trillion happening on the opening and the balance happening at the close. So they started buying pretty much right right from the bell and even before. And then, you know, just kept it up all day long. Now, what the market did do was go above where I had marked minor wave two, and that was at 14,391. So when I just pop this out, let me just take a one up to the four hours so we can see it more clearly. That essentially now what it has done, it has taken me back to that minor. So here we have minor one, then that was minor two. But minor two now is actually what is still in progress. And so now that we've gone up to there. So I, I, I still am counting this as a larger intermediate third wave down. And that is all part of that. The highs of the highs are still at 16,000 um, up here at 16,768. And so this is just a large, pretty much out of control, uh, minor wave two correction. Even though it went down and put in a new low below minor wave one, but that was a B wave and it's going to end up being um, irregular. Not by much, but by enough that it's irregular. And so, when that occurs, the normal then retracement back up for the C wave is going to be somewhere around 1.236 to 1.382 of wave A. So by this measurement, then, we are still looking at some additional upside. Now, they're kind of taking a pause here because this whole thing is just not it has gotten extremely overbought, number one. It is now sitting up and it's like, well, are we gonna to continue to buy everything or are we done because of expiration? And so how do we wanna come out of this and, and how do we wanna balance this against uh, what's really kind of happening with inflation, with interest rates, et cetera, et cetera. So if the focus needs to, chair, to change back to uh, what we might term as reality or, or just, you know, the Fed's minimal raising last Wednesday, 
that was uh, not to, to many in the financial world, a serious stance to take against inflation. So that's when I looked over and I thought, you know, they're just buying it, buying it, buying it, buying it, buying it on Friday, that it truly was a matter of this is all expiration. Now that, and it was a very, very large sum of money. So the way I have to look at it is that there was probably some very large firms that were not willing to get out of positions below 13,000. And they were gonna have all of this come back up and then they got it going and it just kept going and they just convinced everybody to jump in with them. So I, that's my take because for the life of me, I couldn't think why you'd wanna to continue to buy it in the face of what was going on um, with inflation. Inflation is not friends to the market. Inflation is just, you know, cheap money that cannot exist anymore. Inflation has now even kind of come through where we're seeing mortgage rates start to creep higher. We're seeing um, a, a, a severe decline in junk bonds, in corporate bonds. So there's, there's trouble brewing. And I, for whatever reason, equity traders don't seem to want to take a look at that and to see how could that affect what they're doing along with what's happening geopolitically, et cetera, et cetera. So in any case, I do think we are in the final throes of this minute sea wave up to complete minor two. Now I know that, that if you're not that comfortable with Elliot, it's gonna be more like, oh, he's just changing it again. Oh, he's just talking about this again. But again, I just wanna make a reference that I follow Elliot and it does tell the story, but at the same time, the market's always gonna be able to tell us essentially what is going on outside of what I may be tracking the market as. So again, once I see a market break a rule, then I know that I need to take a step back and rethink about what my count is. Well, my count is still, I still believe that we're, we're setting ourselves up for a major, major sea wave down. And the higher we go, the harder it's gonna fall. And so that is still out there. But with them breaking that uh, top level for minor two, it brought about, uh, I had two choices. Either it was going to be an ABC and all on a primary, and this would be a primary A, and now we're in the primary B wave, et cetera. And I thought that doesn't fit. But what did fit is this is minor one, and this is A of minor two, B of minor two, and now we're doing C of minor two. And it basically is almost just a flat. It hasn't soared above that high of 14,391. So it's basically almost still an ABC flat. Got a little bit below the levels, and now it's a little bit above the levels. So still a basic flat structure. Now the highs and the lows pretty much pair up. We're not breaking strongly higher. Now, so having said that, if I count this out, right? So we have to sub-minute sub -minute waves to produce the minute C wave. And it has to be five of them. So there's one, two, three subdivides, three, four. So this is five. Now, I, there's not really been a whole lot of declines within this fifth wave. So it's a little bit difficult to say, well, is this one of five? Is this three of five? Is this five of five? Um, so it's, it's still out there. Now, if we really just start to break and this is done, then again, we're gonna come flying down. And I don't know who's gonna start that. Obviously right now in the start of our Globex session, there's no pressure from sellers to step in and push it. Like we have seen in so many other areas of the market where we walked in on a Sunday uh, evening when Globex opened and it gapped. It gapped down four or 500 points and then they brought it back. And it gapped down three or 400 and they brought it back. It's not gapping anywhere. So um, we're gonna have to wait and see, but should it turn to start give us clues on this hourly chart, again, I'm going to be looking for the development and of a five-wave structure down to give us the confirmation that this is done 
and our next down cycle has begun. So, but in that process, it's gonna break the eight, the 20, the 50, and eventually the 200. So, but initially, I would think it comes very quickly taking this back. It very quickly gets back below 14,024. That would be my take. And then right below the 50, and then they start breaking down further. So we have, which was resistance on the way up and now support on the way back down, 14,024, 13,912, 13,792, 13,630. So we have it coming all the way back down, but it should provide, if it's going to drop, it, we should see some acceleration, but it's going to find some of these support levels to possibly be a resting point, a pause in a decline that should continue. And maybe that pause would give us a little bounce. So we can get a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. So that we get that confirmation that the turn has now occurred. And we can start counting down for our for a downside move. And the reason I really do the Elliott for us as day traders is so that I can get an idea where I can expect the larger moves. If we're going up as we did on Friday, and this I wanted to include. I cannot begin to tell you that it just went straight up. And if you traded the last half hour, they pushed so hard that you, you dared not take a short. But my point here is, is that when you're trading and you're using the price action and you can see it comes up, it doesn't pull back, it pulls back, but it goes again. When it doesn't break, and this is an hourly bar, so. If I even took it over to like the one and the two and the five minute bar, the same clue happened. There were no sellers. It was just a push and a buy that when it broke to new highs, you, you just could buy it. This was a situation where breaking to, new, to the new highs produced another thrust higher. So you could buy it. Now that isn't always the case, but we were in a finishing leg. We were also in straight buying pressure. It was, it was really strong buy pressure on the market. And the most volume, again, out of the, all of this came right here into the close. And so after the close, they continued to buy it, but it came in the last push between um, 3.30 and four o'clock. Then they truly just pushed and that's when the volume came. That's when I saw that, you know, and I think a lot of it had to do with the actual expiration and they're just grabbing futures because they needed it against whatever they were doing. So that's where I saw the largest volume come in on the day. Up to that point, the NASDAQ mini was, for the amount that the market was up, crap volume, just light. And so it was getting pushed and sellers were just standing back on like, we're not even going to try. So it really did become where you just bought with them. And so that's what I want to say, because there are many, many times when we're looking for the turn and I'm looking and you wouldn't want to buy it, but this was like, it became so clear and we broke all the moving averages and they were all pointing up. And you can see this one was pointing strong, strong and strong to the upside. And they still are, they've not broken at all. We have not even come down and broken the four, the hourly four at the start of Globex. So that bright pressure is still there, folks. How long is it gonna last? I, I, we don't know. Now, if we continue to get upside, I would assume that we're gonna get a little pullback first, at least back to the eight, if not even a little bit deeper. But our next resistance comes in at 14,644. Now, if I pull this out and look at the four hour chart, we are, see up here, I have to come all the way back to uh, mid-February to find some resistance levels, like 623. Uh, let's open that up, maybe I can get some more. Uh, now that's a little bit too high. Go over here, I got some at 668, so it's even above that one. Um, and there is really nothing in between now that we've, we're doing it. So 
Yeah, six six forty four, six forty five. That's going to be price and Fibonacci resistance. Beyond that, fourteen thousand eight forty five. We have not really how much. We got some at sixty eight, maybe. The price resistance, some price resistance at again sixty seven, sixty seven. So there isn't really anything that's going to be pushing hard to resolve all of this upside and to start the selling. Now, again, there's been a lot of push and a lot of talk that the, the lows are in and we're just, it, we're, we're blasting off. Um, that I see because in essence, when you watch it, that's certainly what it feels like. How much more there's still left for people to push into the market, I don't know. But I, I really am not thinking that we are heading. If anything, if anything, folks, if it breaks up here, 15,260, yes, we're opening up the door for a run towards the highs, no, no doubt. But it, then it truly does change it to the alternate view that I have spoke about, that this is intermediate A, intermediate B, intermediate C down here at this low to put in a primary A wave and we're in a primary B wave, which would be expected to take us back up above 15,900 back above 16,000. So we, the, yes, potential for this does exist. But again, the market has to tell us. So again, I put it into perspective in terms of, we have to be fluid in how we want to trade. We have to be fluid in how we want to interpret the market. And so again, if you're being more of a position trader, you may have puts, you, you know, you're looking at puts. And that I can tell you is not necessarily a bad position, but be ready to roll with what's happening in front of you and to be able to maybe put some calls on or you know, change a position that's going to help you balance things out while you wait for it. They, you know, obviously, the, the call for things to go down and to go down hard was early. Doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet. And so when you're in there trading, we have to be a little bit more fluid with, our, with how we want to approach the market. Again, as a day trader, Friday was a, a kick butt profitable day because everything was lined up. And if you could get over the fact it's like, oh my God, look at what they're doing, look at what they're pushing, look, when's the downside? You know, you just traded what was in front of you. It was an extremely profitable day. And that's my point. I, I, I can't, uh, once we broke about 14,391, it was like, just buy it, just buy it because it's going and it went and it just continued um, for another 50 points. But even, it, even before that, it was clear. So in any case, what I wanna just say, we need to trade what's in front of us. The count is there, but I'm at the same time, I try to give points where it's like, if it breaks this point, it negates what we're thinking in terms of the downside. When it broke that point, it negated that this was a, 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 a sub-minute wave two with, a wave, with the th wave three coming there. But remember at that same time, I said, even if it breaks there, it's still, we're still gonna get a decline. It's just now being pushed out further in the future before it begins. So we have to trade what's in front of us. So for tomorrow, I, I think that yes, we can look and not necessarily expect, but we have to allow for a continued rally. And when it does, here are resistance. Four, 14,644, 14,845. We have 14,668, 670 in between that. And then once we break there, we're heading. We have, we have really nothing. There may be a couple things at 14,900. 14,000, you know, the, the, round, the, the round numbers going up, but nothing really from prior. And over here, I'm back into early February, you know? So yeah, 
There's a lot going on. Now, we can push if they continue to just pile in. And then that would suggest, and just remember, as we're going, it just puts them, the burden back on these the buyers because it's a B wave. And if you don't understand what a B wave can be and what it looks like, they're pretty wild. A, a C wave within a B can look like a third wave. Just get out of the way, we're going in the direction. And this one is telling you everybody's getting long, they're getting out of the shorts, getting long, and that may be the case with it. But for tomorrow, we need to allow for additional upside. Again, downside, if it starts to kick in, it's gonna break the four, the eight, the 20. When it starts to do that, it's gonna give more pressure to the buy side to keep it up. And it's going to allow more downside pressure as people begin to then reevaluate and maybe change again. So a break of the 20, 13,938.39, right in there. That it may produce some acceleration. And then again, we have the support there at a, a 7, 892, 892. And then we, it just continues. And we have the 50 at 13,762. So when things start to break down, those are, those are actually the four hours. So I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> on the hourly, our 20 sits at 14,190. So it's up pretty high. And then the 50 is at 14,020. So again, here we are going to dealing with breaking below 14,000. And then battle, 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 battle. But at this time, if it comes off, I think this time it, it should just go. It really should. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to go on too far, but I wanted to make sure that we understand that when you get yourself into a situation or get the market gets itself into a situation where it's telling you, hands down, we're not going down, we're going up. And buy breaks, buy the breakouts. And if it's like, if it's reverse and we're going down, we're going down, you buy, you buy the breakdown. You buy it when it breaks out to the downside. Well, excuse me, you sell it. And on the a reverse, when it's going up, you buy it. Sorry about that. So I'm going to leave it right there. We are very oversold. We, you can see that, that the money flow peaked here. So that tells you about the volume. Then I went down and then it didn't really exceed it, even though price-wise it did. So that's why I'm telling you, light volume. This is where all the volume was. Then it got light by light by light. Okay. Next update will be on Monday, the 21st.